Hello YouTube, this is Frugal, back with the, what is the second part of the Amsterdam to Innsbruck flight and the fifth part of my 737 NGX series in total. You'll remember in the last part we went through a fairly complex setup of the navigation system using the FMC. We have a stepped climb out of Amsterdam because of the residence and noise abatement rules and everything else. So we're going to be climbing to 3000, at which point we will level off, accelerate, climb to 6000 and wait for clearance up to flight level 390. Now, in this video, it's, it's a very long flight, actually, from Amsterdam to Innsbruck. Well, fairly long compared to the previous flight that we did. So we're really going to be following everything that's in PMDG's tutorial and really messing around with the FMC and seeing what it can do in terms of reprogramming your route on the fly. Talk more about that once we get in the air because it's a fairly long uh, leg before we get to that part of the flight. So I'm just going to get rolling here, going to enable FS to crew, and off we go. So bear with me while I stop talking to you and start talking to the plane. Take off. Check. Eighty knots. Checked. Alright, so the autopilot is now engaged and I can get back to talking to you. So, yeah, in this flight we're going to be focusing really on the FMC, reprogramming your route, doing the sort of stuff that you would normally do with this aircraft in response to air traffic control. So if you're flying with VATSIM or somebody like that, online uh, air traffic control, some of this stuff's going to be very useful. In fact, if you just want to really nerd out, I mean, come on, we'll, we'll play flight sims, we're nerds, right? Uh, if you really just want to nerd out and pretend certain things and reprogram the FMC in response, then you can. Some of this stuff's going to be very useful for dealing with weather as well. You've got to watch the speed here before we get to the flaps up speed. So there's the uh, town that we're trying to be quiet for. All these people here and obviously over here. How's our route going? First turn. Coming up on 3000. Which is where we will speed off. Speed up. Transition altitude. Altimeter is 1013. Checked. So you can see the nose pitching down right now to pick up a bit more speed. We'll be approaching the uh, flaps up speed now. Flaps up. Flaps up. So he's doing all his stuff now. We'll get ready for the after takeoff checklist. I'm ready for the checklist. After takeoff checklist. Engine bleeds on packs. Auto landing gear up and off. Flaps up and lights. After takeoff checklist complete. Alright, so now we're going to be climbing up to 6000. And what we would normally be doing at this point is waiting for clearance to start climbing up to our, our main flight level, which is 390. Again, we're going to simulate that and just to, just to cover the format of these uh, videos here. I'm still learning the 737 NGX. It's not an aircraft that I would normally fly, so it's been a challenge for me, also juggling time and life and all that kind of stuff, to really dive in here. So I'm actually following PMDG's 737 NGX tutorial flight number two, which is very, very complicated. Um, I've modified it quite a lot as well, just to make it more complicated, because I'm using FS to crew. So this is the PMDG 737 NGX, obviously in Microsoft FSX, with FS to crew handling all my voice commands and everything else. Here we go, we're at 6,000 feet. Now, also I'm using easy.camera, 
which is how I can do all the floaty, smooth, move around the cockpit stuff like this that you guys can't if you don't own Easy Dot Camera. I do get a lot of questions about that actually and how to configure it, so I will be doing a video explaining how to configure Easy Dot Camera. It's a very, very cool tool, but very confusing. The UI sucks. Now, I did notice the other day, practicing this flight, that even if you're using Track IR, which I have as well, it's sometimes hard to bounce between down there and up there, looking at changing the FMC and checking what you're doing on the ND up here and so on and so on. You can actually click on these things and pop them out. Whoops. And then once you pop them out, you can lock them in place and have them on the screen pretty much permanently, which is a very cool feature. It doesn't really detract from the immersion of the sim, I think. So let's bring that up. Let's bring the FMC up as well. There it is. Good, so now they're up. Move that out of the way a little bit. And I will change the range on our view. Okay, so at IV LUT, or India, what is that? India Victor Lima Uniform Tango. Well, just before we get there, we're gonna presume that we've got clearance and we're gonna start climbing up to a, a flight level 230. I wanna show you some of the things that that does. In the previous flight to Amsterdam, you saw me use Altitude Intervene on the MCP up here to actually set a, an altitude and climb to it. I want to show you what that does down here as well to the legs. Now currently we have an altitude restriction of 6,000 feet at that waypoint. Let's say that we get ATC clearance early and we can climb early. If I do the altitude intervene, this actually goes in and recalculates all the altitudes at the various waypoints based on what we just did, which is really pretty awesome. So let me go ahead and do that. Set flight level 230. So he's now dialing up a new flight level down here. I'm gonna wait for him to finish that and I'll get him to press the altitude intervene button because it's all the way over there and I can't be bothered to reach. I'm being facetious, of course. It's actually his job as the first officer. Select altitude intervene. That didn't work. Select altitude intervene. Altitude intervene set. There you go. You see it cleared out that 6,000 restriction straight away and it recalculated the altitude at each of the waypoints, which is a, an important thing to know. Now, because we did the altitude intervene, we're currently in VNAV speed, where the autopilot is controlling our speed throughout this climb. What this means is if we change the altitude again, prior to reaching the set altitude, which we put it into VNAV alt, um, if we change the altitude again, we'll just keep climbing up to that new altitude. We don't need to do the, the altitude intervene or anything like that, which we're gonna do in a little while, but not right now. So, let me change the range up on this and see exactly where we are at. Okay, quite a way to go. I'm going to start messing with the flight plan round about here at MISCO. Show you some of the neat things you can do round about there. So I'll probably cut the video in a little bit so you don't have to sit through the boring stuff. Um, but I'll talk you through some of the things. i got to say, first of all, my appreciation for this has grown considerably. As I said, I think, in the first video, I'm not really into the heavies and the jets. I don't like flying a computer. Well, that's what I thought. I was kind of intrigued by the challenge of learning how to fly one of these, which is how I got into it. Um, and I've been very pleasantly surprised. I've done this flight now a few times. I've done the manual landing in Innsbruck. It's a hellish landing in Innsbruck. I've done that manually a few times. And the more I do it, the more enamored with this aircraft I get. There is so much detail in this. And to be honest, so much work that you need to do in maintaining the computer and the everything, you know, setting up your waypoints and your legs and managing all that stuff and the autopilot on a very complex approach like Innsbruck takes a huge amount of time and it's a wonderful challenge, really, really good fun. So I really have changed my opinion of this quite a lot. Let me just check on my checklist right here and see that I haven't missed anything in terms of FS to crew because he can get out of sync very, very quickly. No, I think we're good. All right, so I'm going to cut it right about here, and when we get back, we will be just before the MISCO waypoint. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Okay, we're coming up on MISCO right now, so we can really start playing with the FMC and reprogramming our route on the fly, as it were. This is sort of the stuff that you would be doing in response to ATC calls normally. So if you're flying online with VATSIM, they might be asking you to do some of the stuff that, that the PMDG tutorial is talking you through, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Alternately, some of these things would apply really if there's weather problems and all that kind of stuff. So 
it, it really just demonstrates the level of depth that PMDG have built into this aircraft. It really is quite phenomenal. So the first thing I'm actually going to do, I'm doing it a little bit early, but I don't really care. In fact, no, I will wait. In fact, while we're waiting, let's just get a little quick drink up here. As is now tradition on my videos. Hello. One juice, please. Okay, I'll be out there in a moment. Thank you. Alright, so she'll bring me a nice little drink of juice so my throat doesn't dry out. Still got quite a way to go to our top of climb. We're at 30,000 feet, climbing flight level 390. Quite a way to go yet. Long flight. Very long flight. And we're really going to start messing with the route once we pass this waypoint here. Where's my drink? Should have ordered coffee. She might have to open a carton for the orange and then she's got to put ice in it pour it out. It's a bit of a pain. Hello gentlemen, here are your drinks. Thank you. Anytime. Isn't she nice? She's so helpful. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Alright, we're coming up on that waypoint now. How far to go? 3.8 miles. So we're going to start the turn. Once we level out of this turn, I'll show you the stuff. So leveling out of this turn, we will be heading towards Golf Mike Hotel, which is, what, 40 miles away from here? And what we're going to do is simulate getting an ATC call that clears us direct to Tesco. So typically, if you're on that sim, you might get somebody on the radio who says something along the lines of Frugal 738 cleared direct when able to Tango Echo Sierra Golf Alpha. And then you reply, great, thank you very much. So now you need to change your route. Here's how we do that. It's actually very much like programming the route on the ground. Select the waypoint you want to go to just by clicking it. That copies it down the bottom here, bottom line. Then all you need to do is click on where you want that uh, leg to go. So we want that leg to replace that route, sorry. Sorry, that waypoint, my goodness, to replace Golf Mike Hotel up here. So we just click on it and it's showing me, okay, if I do that, this is what's going to happen. You see this dash line telling me you're going to skip this. You're going to turn right and go that way. All you need to do now is just click execute. See the route changed over here? Previous waypoint went away, the line changed, now we're heading direct that way. Very cool, very simple. Um, that was one of the things that worried me about this aircraft, is having all these systems to manage. How tricky would it be if I'm online with VATSIM and they start giving me weird orders like that one? There's a bunch of other stuff you can do as well. These are, are somewhat rarer um, situations dealing with ATC, but they can happen. And again, I, ju I just geek out a little bit about how in-depth the, the FMC simulation is in this. Let's say that you get on a long track waypoint. Now what that means is it's a waypoint that is named but with a distance. So let's say ATC says, yeah, turn turn right or go direct to Bombay at Tesco 20 miles before Tesco. This is how you would do it. Select Tesco once again here. That copies it down here and then just type in what you want. So we put a slash and we want it to be 20 miles before. So minus sign 20 line select that back up over the waypoint that we're heading to and it moves you see that it's added in a new waypoint sorry it doesn't move it. it's added in a brand new waypoint for us we could then actually go and delete tesco and put bombi in its place which would be kind of cool you could do that like this and like this there you go so now i've created a new waypoint and i've said when i get to that waypoint go direct to bombi which is kind of cool i don't want to do that you can back out of any of these things so you're free on a long flight like this to really mess around and experiment which is very awesome just click erase and it puts everything back let me move on to my notes and bring up the next change that we're going to do i think it's weather based bear with me oh no place bearing distance what we just did was uh, a long track place bearing distance is very similar it's you might get a call to fly to um, 270 degrees from tesca at 20 miles out that's very easy to do as well. Click on Tesca or the waypoint in question. Type in the heading or the bearing from it, I should say, 270. What distance along that bearing, so 20 miles. So what we're doing here is creating a waypoint that is bearing 270 from Tesca, 20 miles away from it. Watch this. How cool is that? We got a disconnect. We would need to change the disconnect by putting basically Tesca there. Now we've got rid of the disconnect put in a new waypoint but a waypoint based on bearing and distance from another waypoint 
which if you think about the math involved in that and and the fact that this is this sim right now is managing everything else like drawing the world outside managing the aerodynamics simulating the aircraft as a whole that's pretty cool i really like that all right what's the next thing we can do bearing bearing this is kind of an intersect bearing bearing so let's say we got a call from ATC telling us to fly to 270 degrees from Tesco where it intercepts 300 degrees from Bombay. Sounds horrendous, right? It's actually very easy. Select Tesco, type in 270, 270 degrees from Tesco, and put the slash in, 300 degrees from Bombay. So B O, uh, wrong one, B O M B I, and then we put in 300. Watch this. How cool is that? That's 300 degrees from Bombay, or 300 degrees to Bombay, or from, no, from Bombay, I'm sorry, and 270 from Tesco. Very, very cool. Again, a disconnect, discontinuity in the route. Just select and clear. Very, very simple. Let's get rid of that. The next one is really weather avoidance. So if you've got the weather radar up and it tells you there's a nasty storm coming up, you can put in something called an offset. This is a little bit more complicated, but still not so hard as to be something you would never do in a flight. What we do is we go back to the unit ref page, click on index, and then click on offset. Now you need to tell it whether you're going to offset left or right. So we're going to offset our course left 10 miles. So we put in left L 10. Put that in here. Look at that. The whole route shifted to the left. Now maybe we don't want the whole route shifting left. We actually just want part of the route. Well, the way we get around that is to simply put in start and end waypoints. So let's say we just want to shift left at Tesco and come back on course at, what is that, Haran? Haran? Let's do that. So start is Tesco. There we go. So we're on course up to Tesco. Then we start shifting left and we want to come back on course at Haran. H-A-R-E-N. No. I must have spelled it wrong. It's not harem, surely. Harem. I guess it is. Let's try that again. Put an M on the end. It's hard to read. It's very small. My goodness, there's a waypoint called harem. <laughs> so now we've shifted left on this part of the course. So maybe there's a large storm right here. We're just going to fly around the storm. Again, very, very, very easy to do. Oops. Have a meal service. You can find the meal and beverage choices in the menu given to you when you're reporting. Please keep the aisle clear so we can serve you more efficiently and also for your own flight safety. Thank you very much. All right, now we shut up. If you go back to the legs page here, it now shows you there's an offset in place and it tells you the offset is right here, which is kind of cool. And obviously you can see it over here. Let's get rid of that. The other thing you can do is put in CDU fixes or just fixes on the map, which are very, very nice, especially for something like the Innsbruck approach that we're doing, where it's, it's absolutely imperative that we're very well aware looking at this screen of where we are at all times. All we do for that is press the CDU fix button, which is there. Type in where you want to fix on, so Tesca. It could be any waypoint or VOR. We'll put in Tesca. And now you specify the kind of fix that you want. So let's say we wanted a 270 degree from Tesca. 270 degree radial. Look at that. There's the 270 degree radial now from Tesca, which is kind of cool. Now let's put in slash 20 for 20 miles and put that into line 3. Now it's drawing a 20 mile circle around Tesco and the 270 radial. So if you were told intercept the 270 radial then hold 20 miles from Tesco, it's very easy to do and to visualize now, which is pretty neat. Okay, now the next thing we can do is even tell us to give us a fix which is a beam to a radial. So let's pick up a VOR. Let's pick up Tau, which is very close. It's around here somewhere. We'll put that one in and now we can just say a beam. And it shows us we will be a beam that VOR at this point in the route, which is pretty damn cool. If we wanted to now, we could actually put that into as a waypoint as well. Not going to. I'm actually going to go back to the legs page and clear everything up, which we've done. And we're all set. <sighs> kind of rushed through that. And like I said, I'm still learning this aircraft, so a lot of this is very new to me as well. But I hope that gives you some idea of the things you can do with the FMC. It's very cool. There's so much variety you can put in here in changing a route dynamically, getting fixes on screen, being a more aware of where you are in the world, particularly for complex approaches like the one that we're going to be flying in the next part of this video. Which brings me on to the next part of this video. In the final part of this second flight, it will be the 
ILS Lock DME approach to runway 8 at Innsbruck, which is the manual circling approach trying to avoid nearby mountains. Um, hope you got something out of this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. This channel is all about sims, everything to do with sims, mainly flight sims, also race sims. Once again, my name is Frugal. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you for the landing.